well. Had enough massive tail whip. He's three for three on that trick. There it is, another oh, 541. Gosh! gosh. Miron throwing it down as big as it gets. Getting the job done. If I had to describe Jay Miron in a few words, I think I would have to describe him as a, like a world-class surgeon, is super skillful, but then when the bell rings, the ferociousness of a heavyweight boxer. Big 540 right here. Hi, my name is Jay Miron. I'm 48 years old from Vancouver, Canada. Former professional BMX rider, turned pro in 89. Congratulations, Jay. Retired in 2005, retrained as a woodworker and furniture designer, and I now design and build bespoke furniture out of my studio in East Vancouver. I think the day I learned to ride a two-wheel bike, I was trying to jump it and do tricks on it. Just on my bike, riding, 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 trying to be crazy, and then I actually found out there was a sport called BMX and I was hooked immediately. Eventually, I uh, turned it into a career. Basically, my job was to do the coolest stuff I could every single day of my life. For 17 years, I flew around the world, met amazing people, saw amazing places, experienced amazing culture, and rode my bike like there was no tomorrow. My personal opinion, Jay is the greatest all-around rider. Six world titles, nine X Games medals, first X Games win dirt, Invented numerous tricks. First dude to do a double backflip. Pulled the first 540 whip, which was do or die. Flatland, street, dirt, vert. He's done it all and he's killed it at all of it. He's a Hall of Famer in my opinion. He could ride anything. He could put together some of the heaviest street clips that you've ever seen. It was gnarly, you know? Like, there's not a lot of guys that can win a vert contest and still have an X Games first place dirt win as well. That's unheard of, even now. There's guys who invent stuff and guys who wait for things to in get invented and then do it better than the guy who invented it. And Jay was both. He invented stuff and then he did it gnarlier than anyone could ever do it. And I think that, to me, is what makes him that spark that was amazing. Retired in 2005, I was pretty beat up when my career ended. You know, lots of concussions and, you know, torn shoulders and cracked vertebrae in my back and compressed discs. Started a bike company with a couple of my friends. It seemed like such a great idea, but there I was, sitting at a desk, typing emails, making phone calls, and still closely involved with the sport I love, but no longer physically able to do it the way I wanted. And it was kind of torture. 2009, I left the BMX world completely, then went to woodworking school. I started training under this legendary woodworker, Robert Van Norman and uh, learned an entire new craft, and here I am now. I design and build custom-made, handcrafted furniture for a living, and I'm still having the time of my life. Uh, when I first met Jay, you could see the passion and the attention to detail immediately in not only the way he spoke about his work, but in, in the actual work. 
when I hear someone talk about their work with that much passion, I know that there's something really good in there. The perfectionism and the detail in his work is beyond what I've seen in anything else. Everyone in the design world always asks me, like, how in the world did you go from being this wild and crazy BMX dude to being this super high-end furniture guy? But I don't see it that way at all. Like, you know, I pushed the limit pretty hard in BMX, and I did some big do-or-die moves. That was kind of what I was known for. But it was never how I saw it. For me, it was a craft, and it was the skill and the challenge of learning and progressing. And in that respect, I'm challenging myself and I'm pushing myself and I'm progressing every day. A lot of that goes into woodworking as well because uh, you have to be a perfectionist so that you get a great end result from the work. And also, uh, you have to be really careful and do the work perfectly for your safety in a woodworking shop. Before there were CNC machines and before it was like program in this table, you know, the old boys had to figure it out and, and do it analog style. And man, I really love that kind of woodworking. I love working with hand tools. I love engineering how it's going to go together and figuring out the strongest way to do it. For me, it's about going slow, being perfect, and building pieces that are going to last generations. I got my first BMX magazine in 1989, and it's like, all right, I got to this next level, I got to that level, I won a contest. You know, all of a sudden the magazine wanted to interview me, and then I got a cover shot. And it's, it's kind of going the same way in furniture. I remember the first time a magazine contacted me and said they wanted to do a feature on me. And then I got my first international magazine and I got the cover of the local newspaper. And it, it's, it's the same exact progression as, as BMX. I kind of get to relive it, you know, but I know what's happening this time. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that's important. You know, you're becoming well known and you're getting your name out there. It's pretty cool. Being an athlete, uh, especially at a world-class level like Jay is, I think when that's over for some people, there's quite a bit of an identity crisis. You know, it makes it very hard on someone who felt like they knew who they were. And now without bike riding, I'm sure Jay, I would assume, at least I would, would feel like, who am I? And Jay found that other thing. And I think that is a huge tell on what kind of person he is. That it wasn't like, I've made it, this is my thing, and now I've done my one thing. It was like, this was just the beginning, this is one chapter, and now he has this other chapter that he's equally, if not more, impressive at. It's pretty inspirational to see it for all of us guys or guys who are coming up and to know that you can do that. You, you're not just that one thing. I'm having fun every day. Every day I'm coming into the studio and doing the best I can, the same way every day I used to go to the skate park and do the best I could. And I just don't think I'm a nine to five type of dude. I'm the kind of guy that just has to be passionate about my work and I can't leave it at work. I kind of like that I come home every night and still think about it and stress about it. You know, I, I guess it works for me. I'm basically sitting in my skate park now. I come here and have fun all day. It's a pretty amazing life to live. <laughs>